everyone myself dr triparna saha in this particular video lecture we are going to talk about how to get started with matlab coding platform if you are unfamiliar with this particular coding platform then this particular video lectures are for you earlier we have talked about how to implement different well known algorithms using matlab or octave while doing that particular lecture series i have got some queries from the students that they are not familiar with matlab so i have done this particular lecture where we are going to start about how to use matlab so this is the first lecture video of this particular lecture series here we are going to have 60 different codes and all the codes will be preliminary codes by which you are going to understand how you can start writing codes using matlab if you are familiar with matlab and want to check some advanced videos on matlab coding then please refer to another playlist that is known as implementing well known algorithms using matlab or octave or other coding platforms like python r that is already available in my youtube channel so let's start today's video so the word matlab that that came from the two words that is matrix laboratory so from this total name that is matrix laboratory you can understand here we are going to represent each variable by the concept of matrix here there are user written functions can be possible as well as matlab gives you a plenty of built in function so based on that function you can easily implement your code matlab can perform graphics in 2d as well as in 3d here computations of linear algebra ordinary differential functions etc can easily be possible external interface with c and photon programs are also achieved there are several toolboxes for example signal processing toolbox for example artificial intelligence toolbox and for example computational intelligence toolbox now let us talk about the advantages of using matlab first is there is no need to write header files built in functions are already present as well as several toolboxes are already present also no need to assign types for variables like int for integer float for floating number that you have done for the c programming here almost never have to declare dimension of matrix matrices are already assigned based on the dimension you are going to provide in the code so these are basically the differences with c programming vectorized commands can run much faster in matlab suppose you have a alpha variable with 100 elements then computation of y is equal to sin of alpha that is taking the sin function of that particular variable alpha can be done simultaneously also matlab is very easy to be programmed so the platforms where you can install matlab are the windows linux unix mac and etc so just talk about three basic concepts of matlab first one in the command window that are going to discuss later on there if you get this particular sign that is of greater than of two sign that means it's a matlab prompt command that is there you can write down your particular code and then it is supposed to cross 5 so this is basically represent the command and if something has been displayed as answer is equal to 10 then that is the response that matlab has been given based on your code so now let's talk about the matlab windows first window you can see over here this is the command window here 
courts are executed as well as outputs of the court can be viewed here this window this is the workspace here variables are generated during code execution and that can be seen in this particular workspace different variables what are their type what is the dimension what is the maximum and minimum values in that particular variable all it can be checked over here and you can understand where the code is going wrong this is a very easy feature in comparison with the c programming another is the command window here you can see what are the codes that have been executed previously suppose you want to run a code that you have run two days earlier so you can just go through that particular command from the command history and run that code once again now let's talk about the current directory suppose you are try to execute one particular code so that code should be from this folder if the code is not from that folder then matlab is going to give you the prompt that do you want to change the current directory always select yes without changing the current directory to that directory where your code is present you are never going to run that code another important feature of command directory is that to execute any code the folder where the code is present needs to be made current directory as already told now let's talk about the graphics window suppose in the matlab command window you have type something like that i am show that is image show of cameraman dot tif that means you are trying to tell matlab that show that particular image the name is cameraman dot tif this is a inbuilt image that is already stored in the matlab file so here if you type that particular command in the command window you are going to get this particular output that is graphics window shows the generated graphical output i will urge please go through this command in your command window of the matlab and check whether you are going to get this particular image or not next talk about the edit window or the m file suppose you have a long code so you cannot run the particular code line by line in the command window for that long amount of code you need to get a m file how or from where that is go to the file then in that file you are going to have this new script then do the new script click on that then you are going to get a blank script this is the m file now save that particular script in dot m format so m file is that particular file where you can execute code and the result of the code if something need to be displayed during the code or after the execution of the code that will be displayed in the command window i will always urge that for longer length of code use a m file to write your code otherwise if you need to modify some part of the code then that will be very 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 difficult to do in the command window now let's talk about what are the help functions that are already present in the matlab suppose during running one particular code you are getting some syntactical errors then what to do you can check in the internet but if you do not have the internet then just go for this help then particular problem where you are going to get that suppose your function was image show i m s h o w so just write in the matlab command window help then i m s h o w then you are going to this total help will be displayed in the matlab command window if you want this particular help to be popped up in a new window then just type doc then i m s h o w so that particular inbuilt function of i m s h o w what of the help are already present in the matlab that will be showed again please type this particular line of code that is help i am show then check whether you are getting this answer or not now let's talk about talk about the input and output so here matlab can deal with different sorts of data types 
integer double double means the real one then dimensioning that can be automatic in matlab matlab is case sensitive that is small a and capital a are both different for matlab now these are the three vital commands of matlab code that you are going to see in everywhere in every matlab code basically so that is the first command is clc that clears the command window suppose some outputs have been generated by some previously run code and you want to clear the command window to check what is the actual output you are going to get in this particular code then just clear the command window then to overcome with the problem of garbage variables just you need to clear out the workspace how to do it use clear all function that clears all the variable functions from the workspace another thing is close all that is going to close all the graphical outputs that are generated during the previously run code these are the three important comments for matlab then in this particular lecture series we are going to talk about 60 different types of codes and let me just remind you once again that these codes all are preliminary codes such that you can understand how to get started with matlab this particular lecture series is the beginners guide to start matlab coding if you want to know something deeper about coding then please refer to my another playlist named tab understanding well known algorithms using different coding platform so thank you everyone for investing your time in this particular introductory lecture and happy studying